when God says he has chosen the foolish to confound the wise, this is not what he meant. I'm not telling you, Papa. When? Now. Okay. Okay. Go in. Go in. Go in. Go in. Hey, smart Christians, you'll see this brought up from time to time when someone will say that what they're doing, though it's unconventional, is the thing that God would use to, as he would say, confound the wise. It's something they would use to try to demean the people who would actually decide to read the scriptures, who and they'll make it as though that we're leaning on our own intellect, which we're not. All we're doing is reading the scriptures. But if you lean on what the words say, They'll say that you're just trying to be wise. If you learn the Hebrew, if you learn the Greek, if you learn how to just walk through the scriptures, well, then you're trying to be wise. You're trying to use knowledge. No, we're trying to literally use what God gave us. And to prove this point, we will go to the very same passage that they go to and show you how anyone that thinks some of this foolishness that we're seeing is what God is using, they have, one, misunderstood the text, but also placed themselves in the wrong category. They place themselves in opposition to what God is trying to do. Here we go. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, let's start in verse 26. He says, for consider your calling. Now, Paul is writing to these believers. Consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. Many wise what? Noble what? People. What does he say? Remember, he's talking about people. But God has chosen. Now, this version, this NASB says the foolish things. I want to go over to the side and look at this. This is why someone might have a problem with us actually using the Greek. But it says God has chosen the foolish. Now, it doesn't say foolish things. It is the mora, which is where we get the word moron, interestingly enough. But God has chosen the mora to cosmo, the foolish of the world. It should not really say the foolish things, but the foolish. It is he has chosen the foolish what? We're speaking about people, so the foolish people. Is he really saying that these people are actually fools or foolish? No, but in terms of how they're looked upon, the foolish uh, of the world to shame the wise what? The wise people, the the sophos, the sophos people, those who are thinking that they are wise, and God has chosen the weak, the weak, which is that not weak things, but weak people of the world to shame the things which are strong. And that's say the word things that are strong just says to shame the strong. And so the point is he's using the foolish or those that are considered to be foolish or the lowly uh, to confound those who are con uh, considered to be wise. But notice they don't ever really point to the next part of it. They don't say that God has chosen the weak people or the weak things. They rarely quote that point, but he's chosen the weak to put to shame those who are strong. And the base things, those who are insignificant, inferior, they rarely would tell you that they are inferior or weak. They don't use that, but God has chosen the weak amongst the people uh, of the world and the despised. God has chosen the things that are not so that he may nullify the things that are so that no man, again, we're, we're speaking about people, not the activities or the things so that no man, no person can boast before God. So when someone is acting in a way that goes against scripture, one, don't tell us that we are putting God in a box. No, God has stated to us what he's going to do. And he's not the author of confusion. He is not going to all of a sudden go around his word that he gave us to read and say, no, 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 no do what you want, but then blame God, say that that's God. No, God has given us his word so we can learn of it. And so, which is why he tells us to teach what comports with sound doctrine and to teach people to live that way. So when someone is acting in ways that are clearly ungodly, or at the very least, seems unorthodox. Paul, you are under arrest in the name of Jesus. You can know for fact that those foolish things is not what God had in mind. Amen.